Hey everybody, uh, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 142, and today we're going to be doing battle with Tristana Timo. And so this deck, it, it kind of came onto the radar uh, just as a blip, maybe two seasons ago is when it would have happened. The the, the kind of timeline was uh, Mage and Bay popularized Aphelios Fizz, I think he hit rank one Masters with it, and so it started to kind of jump up uh, in popularity, and then people started to ask themselves the question, well... Turns out these fairies are actually good. Uh, how do we best <clears throat> uh, put another fairies deck into a best of three lineup? And so, <clears throat> excuse me, if you were just out here grinding out the ladder, you would play a Felios Fizz. But if you're looking to play in best of three uh, for the upcoming seasonals, uh, then this was another option. And so uh, it didn't really uh, uh, take off and uh, kind of got forgotten after that seasonals uh, as... Uh, Gleaming Lantern was immediately nerfed right afterwards. But uh, I think in the current meta right now, we're in a space to where this could potentially be okay. And so what we're seeing a lot of in the meta right now is a lot of pirates and a lot of Annie Jen down in the uh, aggro space. And this has a, a lot of decent answers against it. A decent early game package with uh, Bird, Teemo, Blastcone, Seedling, Grandfather, Fay. Lots of early blockers. We're physically playing the card Tasty Fayfolk, uh, which is a nice lifesteal unit. Uh, and then the Fay Sprout, which has the opportunities to generate other lifesteal units. And so we have some decent game against those aggro decks of the format with some big lifesteal. But the, the deck that's kind of taking over the control space now is Darkness. Uh, I think it's terrible. I don't think it has much business uh, having the play rate that it does, but it does have a positive matchup against Pirates, and so we're seeing a lot of it now. I think given a week or so, it's really going to kind of fall out of the format, but people are playing it right now. And the thing with, uh, with Darkness is it doesn't do spectacularly against decks that are going wide, right? They have uh, some blockers, they can kind of build up and get the uh, the darkness engine going, but for the most part, they're just coming out and trading one for one on you, uh, and they don't have a way to come and deal with a bunch of width. And so uh, we can kind of tackle darkness in multiple angles. We have uh, the big board buildup that you typically see with just the fairies package. We have the Saiyan Thousand Tailed to make the fairies extra good and refill. We have a handful of disruption with the likes of Nopify and Deny, uh, and then we can attack them from two separate angles, uh, by switching onto the Rainbow Fish plus Tristana game plan. That's kind of the uh, additional angle of attack that this deck has, is if you have like a 6 or a 7 or an 8 attack Tristana, loading her up with the Rainbow Fish gets you pretty close to a singular kill on its own. And so ideally we should have some decent game against the edges of the format, and then what I still think to be the best deck in the format is Kaisa. Uh, Kaisa is uh, dropping... She dropped in popularity because the patch came out and she got nerfed. I think people are just still like, LOL, this card's bonkers. Uh, and so let's continue uh, to play with Kaisa. And so we do want to have some interactivity with her. Uh, cards like Will of Ionia uh, work fantastically. Now that uh, Supercharge is slow, now that Second Skin is slow, uh, I'm sorry, Supercharge costs four mana, Second Skin is slow, uh, we, we have the opportunities to potentially send her back to hand while she's unprotected. And that's just a gigantic tempo swing uh, using cards like Will of Ionia to answer Kai'Sa. It's, of course, not a permanent answer, but uh, if they have to uh, give up the entire turn to play her and then replay her again the next turn, uh, then you get yourself uh, the opportunity to just tempo them out uh, and close off the game before she's relevant. And so I will admit Kai'Sa does uh, hit this deck really hard. This deck suffers uh, from a lot of AoEs, but... If we can manage the Kaisas and dodge the Blighted Ravines of the format, we might have our shot, ourselves a shot to win some games. And so, that is the deck we'll be doing battle with today. We do have to pay the pay-to-win price a little bit. You know, as you come out here and play Ionia decks, uh, no one likes to play Ionia, so these cards <laughs> frequently not turned premium. And Nopify, be catching the premium treatment today, ready to counterspell a darkness sure it will feel very good as it happens and so the the price has been paid the deck is set let's go ahead and jump on into battle with our Timo Tristana and so the the first thing I'll say with this deck is you come out here and play some games with it uh, it's not a Timo deck okay we are not playing a Timo deck uh, we are not trying to to build up a bunch of Timo damage and do things with puff caps uh, he is a one cost unit that's multi-faction and has elusive uh, we are not uh, trying to set up uh, any kind of puff cap kill and so don't feel like you have to come out and be ultra protective of your Teemos. That's just not the, uh, it's not the name of the game here today. Oh boy, what a scary start. We got the, we got the bird, but no other units, and then just hard mulliganed into spells. And so 
<laughs> we'll see how this goes. It's a little scary just dropping the bird and not knowing if the chime is going to hit, but we at least found something. Bird found his friend, ready to pass out those stats. Oh. Okay. Well, that was neat. I guess we're not attacking this turn. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's all the birds. I mean, we could put a unit in front of the drop order, but I, I think our bird family is about to at least get us out of this mess a little bit. I saw this card on the right flash a little bit as the as the game bugged, and uh, I thought he hit another drop order, but not the case. So this will be a little unfortunate next turn. He's going to get a second two health unit uh, that he can then use to uh, try and take down our, our various birds, but... Let's see if we hit in here. We did not. We can pick up the Rainbow Fish, but not going to play it. So we'll end up losing one bird in this combat, uh, since we can only twin disciplines. I think it's okay to just hit with everyone now, right? He's going to put his drop order in front of uh, in front of bird, and we can uh, try and pick it off a turn from now. But this is a, a really good start from a really bad deck. <laughs> just coming down and shutting us down like this. This is a deck that gets pretty much annihilated by everything. The various Zillion decks. The the Time Bomb version of Zillion can come in and uh, give some problems to uh, uh, decks like Pirates. But I don't have high expectations for a deck like this. Okay, we're going to let that happen. I'm going to try and get this big rainbow fish happening on bird. Uh, this is one of the, the strategies we used to see when the sun disc was really popping off, and they would try to attack all of your cards with quicksand. Uh, you can quicksand bird, and he will not lose elusive, right? That's just the way, that's the, the name of the game here, is that it, uh, the, the attach maintains its abilities, and so they'll still get to hang on to all of the, uh, the stats if a quicksand happens. All right, let's see what you can do, Bird. We're counting on you, because the, the rest of our deck didn't show up today. Timo. Eh. Maybe we give Timo a turn. We can wait and see if he, uh, if we find, like, a Tristana or something. This the giving the opponent a chance to play slow cards here doesn't feel great. So, see, our Bell Ringer, he still keeps the Elusive. Because that's the way the game works. <laughs> and our Teemo would have just gotten domed there. So hopefully he has a, a little bit of thunder that he can bring up in a following turn. Go ahead and pokey stick the unit down. This is kind of a, an interesting spot in that we could potentially want to just pokey stick his face. Uh, given that uh, the, these ground-based combats aren't going to be super relevant. But... Let's see. Very interesting trading away the Zillion. I think he probably just has another one in hand. Okay. It's not not like the olden days when uh, you, you could just come in and, and uh, leave the Zillion on the board because you don't care about Chrono Shift. <laughs> <laughs> Life's a little bit different now that careful preparation is the uh, the flip card coming out of Zillion. But all right, let's have some fun. Let's get these uh, let's get these elusives in here. I mean, we could look to put the Blasco and Seedling on the board uh, and give it impact. He doesn't currently have any blockers for it, but feels kind of sketchy. Can oh, it's just recall a unit. It's the other one. It's the. Uh, Oh, what should we call it? The uh, homecoming that lets you recall uh, landmarks. I'm gonna go ahead and send Zillion back. I'm not quite ready to see him flip, and I don't think these Will of Ionias are actually gonna do anything this game. So he does get another predict this way, but he may not have the opportunity to to cancel off another time bomb. If he does, I'm probably okay with just sending him back to hand again. He can manifest a time bomb on the board here.
It's getting them both this way. A little unfortunate we couldn't cancel that. He's really not wanting to see him flip. at least deny him the spells. <laughs> Rip bird, you fought hard today, my dude. You fought hard. <laughs> it just it just wasn't enough, my man. All right. See if we can fight through this now. He's he's already played the two uh two copies of the manifest thing and didn't get copies into his hand so he should be pretty short on those at this point really help uh, stop him from comboing off on us okay. some potential to get burnt out here but I, I think we're just kind of stuck counting on our um, E Elusive's doing work. If he has, like, a, a big collection of burn, then fine, but uh, this isn't going to be a deck playing Get Excited, so they're probably playing Mystic Shots, but not Get Excited. Uh-oh, we had a bigger Rainbow Fish in hand. I didn't quite realize that. That might have been a little greedy with our um, with our pokey stick there, since we're so close to lethal. We technically have about eight damage in hand, uh, but I'm a little scared of what's potentially happening to our board. Just time bombs. Time bombs are manageable. Hopefully, get the Fey Folk up to enough health. Uh oh, uh, we're coin flipping. All right. Well, let's see how it goes. We have the Nopify, but it probably not going to be able to hit anything. I mean, he can hit a Hexite Crystal, and we can hit that. But most of the decks, most of the spells in this deck are burst speed. Uh oh, Puff Cat number two. That's how you get him, right? <laughs> Just those pup caps coming through. You say, I knew you could do it, Timo. You were so relevant. <laughs> All right, GG, my dude. On to the next one. Opponent learned a valuable lesson in the ways of the rainbow fish. All right, Sharima again. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> I, I, I just assume. Assume incorrectly. You see the Viego and you're like, all right, here come the Shuriman cards. The Shuriman car is coming right at us. <laughs> Get him, bird. You were showing up in force. You said, I know I'm not multi-faction, but I really wanted to be your friend. And so I'm going to show up in every game in multiples. Let's stay efficient. I'm not entirely sure of the units coming out of Evelyn Vigio, but I think this is the space where we probably want to open, and then we can uh, start to consider boosting stuff with uh, with like the the face sprout. Nopify is an interesting pickup. I mean, if he had a vile feast, he would have played it, but this is the blocker that made me want to open. Hmm. This is interesting, and in that I, I kind of want our 
uh, to, to, to land our chimes on either the Hungry Alcat or on the Face Sprout. And then the Tasty Fae Folk's fairly weak on this board, but it's the one I want gone the most. But the kind of flip side you run into with the Tasty Fae Folk is if you hit a, uh, a Rainbow Fish, then that's a you know fantastic target that's pretty tough to deal with. So Interesting. We should be able to load up an Alcat now. If we uh, drop the Grandfather, we still have access to Nopify, but I don't think we'd want to play it this turn. And then uh, we can we can drop an Alcat and a bird. Look to open next turn. So this guarantees the stats go on the Alcat. And then our units are plenty scary. Uh, if he wants to go for value blocks onto our grandfather phase, then he's going to get absolutely nugged. And then if he wants to uh, prevent damage from our big boys, then we're still pretty reasonably well set up in terms of uh, the grandfather phase boosting whatever we play after this, which is ideally going to be an Alcat plus a, um, like plus a card. All right, dude, I'm ready with my Will of Ionia. <laughs> have you have you seen one of these recently? No? Stana's ready to boom as well. She unfortunately doesn't have spell shields, though. <laughs> I think everyone has, has learned what a treat the spell shield mechanic is. Working for us, you know. It's it's good when it's happening on us our side of the board. Not so much on our opponents. We just ignore this. Like he's gonna try and hook our Alcat. We can go ahead and rainbow fish. Now it's just too big. Okay, not worried. I don't. I don't think he's gonna have any answers to to take down the Alcat. He can pop the spell shield, but then we're pretty well set up for the next turn. All right, GG. Market a W for bust. The the one health upgrade to Neverglade Collector does not feel like enough. But man, I hated that card in Expedition so much. That was uh, it was a real nightmare to deal with in limited formats. But I I, I was talking in our, our our preview patch for our, our preview video for the three thirteen patch. It's like I don't know how big you have to make Neverglade Collector to be relevant. It needs to be like a five six or a five five or something for five mana to to make that ability pop, but uh, it's not there right now. One point, one point of health isn't going to make that thing strong enough to to start bringing the drain mechanic to constructed. But anywho, the GG. All right, next battle. And so I, I, I watched uh, the the major motion picture fist fight last night starring Charlie Day and uh, Ice Cube. <laughs> I, I I've seen it before, but it, it makes me wonder. It makes me curious about. Uh, the, the how gaming is changing over the years and and where this is going is if you're not uh familiar with the the american movie industry uh for the for the longest time all the movies were just made in los angeles or hollywood or whatever we're going to call that uh that area that piece of the world but uh people have started to make a lot of movies in atlanta they just started passing out a bunch of tax incentives to uh, to come to town and do stuff it's also uh just cheaper Right, it's cheaper than not living in California. The taxes in California are a lot higher, and so uh, there's been. I don't want to call it like a major push because I'm not really, you know, in the industry or anything. I just know that they make a lot of movies in Atlanta now. Uh, Fist Fight being one of them, and so uh, where this is going is we were at Grand Prix Atlanta for for Magic the Gathering, and. Uh, you show up, it's at like the CNN Center. CNN is headquarters in Atlanta. They have a huge um, uh, presence there. They have a big CNN Center, which it, it, the convention center was like right next door to it. And so there's like the CNN Center and then uh, the convention center and the like big cluster of hotels all right in the same area. And so we, we get there 
and there's like all these signs up for prom and it's like well that's weird you know it's very odd that the the prom is uh happening on uh on a friday night at this random ass hotel would not expect it and uh one of the uh the the ladies in our travel group was like oh cool i want to go look at the dresses so we're like all right fine so we go down there to go look at the dresses and it's like there's not any kids you know you you go to like a prom type event and you expect there to be uh you know teenage children running around because that's what prom is about uh, and, and there just weren't any. And so it was very fucking strange to turn up to this event and then, you know, have no children be there. It's just a bunch of adults, and the adults are all dressed in, uh, you know, kind of like homecoming y prom kind of dress type things. You are like, well, that's interesting. And so we eventually just walk up to the thing and ask somebody who said, what the fuck is this? Why are there so many uh, adults here? What's the deal with this prom? And they're like, oh, well, the fist fight movie just finished wrapping up and this is our wrap party uh we're having a a a get together in this convention thing and we're like oh cool and they're like uh, and so basically what moves on from that is you're like well if you just show up and act like you belong there no one's going to say anything to you (laughs) and so we just went in and uh the the lady of our group did confirm with the people that uh, they would not be upset if we started drinking their booze and stuff. And they're just like, yeah, it's already paid for. The studio paid for it. Just come in and drink whatever you want. They're like, the the celebrity's already left. And so it's not like you're you're bothering anyone that's going to get uh, upset about the scenario here. And they're like, oh, cool. And so had a, a, a nice little time drinking, uh, drinking booze and enjoying the Grand Prix circuit uh, <laughs> via the Fist Fight movie rap party. And so it, it, it makes me wonder is where that's going. Like uh, the in-person aspect of magic was such a, a major portion of my life growing up. Uh, and then even into my adult life as we were traveling around for Grand Prix and stuff. And it was very, you know, what happens next kind of feel in terms of, uh, you know, it seems like it's going away. <laughs> you know, magic is still a thing. I know Magic Fest is still happening and everything, but uh, I'm not I'm not sure of the... Uh, the presence of something like Friday Night Magic anymore, and uh, how much uh, that still grows and happens. I hope it's still there. But, like, I know they tried it with Hearthstone, right? Coming from paper into digital. Hearthstone tried to have tavern brawls for a while to where you would uh, have a Friday Night Magic kind of event. Uh, I went once or twice. They had it at the the big brewery down here, and it was fun. But uh, after that, they tried to do some stuff with um, uh, they tried to do some stuff with like uh, a, a physical qualifier to, to qualify for like worlds and stuff and I, I played in some of that as well but it, it dropped off pretty quickly uh, after it was initially released and you know that, that is kind of one of the big driving forces and factors in, in terms of uh, having magic going is that it has the in-person aspect you get to go and interact with physical human beings and you know if uh i i just played runeterra in my youth i would have missed out on those opportunities like attending the uh the fist fight rap party <laughs> and so it's interesting it's curious i hope there's a answer for it at some point but who knows maybe maybe riot's got something up their sleeve anywho back to the game we haven't talked about the game very much i was going on uh, going on to story time <laughs> instead of talking about the game. We're just putting units on the board. Uh, opponent isn't that close to deep, and we need to just chunk in as much damage as we can before they hit deep. We've got them fairly low, and so now hopefully we're at a spot to where if we hit uh, rainbow fishes on our face sprouts, then we can just end the game. Uh, otherwise, uh, like how are we going to attack this? Let's start with the pokey stick. Then I'm going to look to Will of Ionia, the Abyssal Eye. And then with the two mana left over, we can play birds, try to get an open attack next turn. We're pretty close to finishing this out. Um, it's another kind of unfortunate space to be sending pokey sticks towards a unit, but hopefully our width will be enough. He thought about dropping something there. I'm curious what that would have been. Does, uh-oh. Atrocity. <laughs> Mana short of atrocity. 
Vengeance? Something? What do you got for us? I mean, I feel like we can probably play units next turn. It's like... That's interesting, mid-combat. But it's like... Is he playing the Ruination is the question of the day. And I don't feel like this is the deck that's probably playing the Ruination. And so, like, the, the kind of next step with this is... Uh, is he going to drop Nautilus, right? If he plays Nautilus, then he'll have the opportunity uh, to start playing units on the cheap. But... Where did this stuff hit? Blastcoon Seedling and then the Fae Folk. Alright, I'm gonna go Rainbow Fish and then see how he spends his mana. Again, if he has the if he has the ruination, then fucking fine. I, I don't think this is the kind of deck that typically uh, dabbles with ruinating. Very interesting when he drops Dreg Dredger. So he does. I guess he could still have Nautilus, but I think if he had Nautilus, he would have just played it. I guess the downside to the Rainbow Fish plans we can't actually punch a lethal. Okay, we'll just have to wait. I'm looking to, to pokey stick this blocker away. Very real chance he doesn't have another unit to play now. Got him. You gotta squeeze them cheeks a little bit in the face of the ruination, but... <laughs> he didn't have it. So that was wild. Like the the speaking of the, you know the the in person aspect of the gaming, like that was that was just how I I made friends growing up. I I, I don't know how to make friends other than uh, going to a magic event and talking to people. <laughs> and so uh, when I when I moved to Kansas City, the only person I knew out here was my brother, and I knew I couldn't just like hang out with my brother twenty four seven. And so it was like a, a an odd space for me in that I knew uh, I was going to have to get a new social circle, but I uh, didn't want to just have that be through magic. I wasn't really in a space to where I wanted to uh, go and deal with Friday Night Magic anymore. And so I did end up uh, finding a nice, finding the board game groups uh, and getting in uh, with, a, with a nice collection of people that way. And it's, it's sad that, like, uh, I don't know what I would have done uh, if I'd moved here kind of like in the middle of COVID. Even now, like, I still look for the... Uh, the, the board game groups in there, for the most part, non-existent. Uh, so it's kind of tough uh, for the for the new people hitting the the new areas of town. What the fuck's going on? It's playing Misfortune Twisted Fate, but not playing... Uh, not playing Pirates? Is he actually just playing a, uh, a Ravenbloom Conservatory deck? Weird, weird. Here come the pirates cards. He's supposed to have like the highest top end heavy draw ever. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. To s no, he's just played two. He had to have like one of these cards physically in his hand on the previous turn. Huh. I don't know, man. Something's going on. I don't know what it is. What we got here? Always want the Fae Folk in these matches. Enjoy. <laughs> that's what that's what you say when this situation turns up. Enjoy, my dude. We got we got the protections our tasty fey folk would potentially need. Oh, that is kind of a scary one with the burgeoning sentinel, but we'll have plenty of health. Did actually hit in the fashion to make it grow. All right, got another face sprout lined up and ready to go. Let's see what that brings us. Not the most exciting set. We we're really hoping to hit and attach for our uh, thing, <laughs> whatever, whatever that dude is called. Uh, but I'll go with the quick attack unit here. 
We'll just have to save the Fey Folk for next turn. So yeah, things turned around. I, I really needed to hit a uh, hit an attach. It just didn't happen. I'll protect you, friend. <laughs> Don't worry, tasty fae folk. I got your back, bro. Tastes like purple. They don't, they don't put these grace voice lines on everything. You gotta have the tasty fae folk out here. Oh, no, no, thank you, sir. No, thank you. Give him, give him a little bit of that echo. Give him a taste. Is that it? Yes, well, we maybe should have traded away our Gleaming Lantern in that space. Oh shit, I forgot about Misfortune. Fuck, fuck, fuck. We should have just taken that damage. I was uh, I was in another world thinking about how awesome everything was going. and <laughs> Slipped my brain a little bit that things could go kind of wrong. Not going to trade out the Fae Folk here, right? We're, we're into this spot to where uh, opponent can probably pretty easily refill their board and we can't. So we're going to want to save the Fae Folk for the defensive. Can't stop that. So let's see. Where is this going to get us? Let's do remember that, <laughs> that his units can uh, can actually trade up and kill ours. Probably a turn where we need to start using a Fae Folk. It, it's like Rainbow Fish is the only card that matters in terms of the Fae Folk now. And we're pretty close to just like drawing it, right? And so, or I mean, if we draw it, we'll just win the game. So we can we can probably safely trade it away. We'll leave the Legion Grenadiers up, uh, since that's going to be, you know, points of damage coming from opponent. All right, Face Sprout, give us something good. Furious Fae Folk, a lethal. We can cast it, but it's not a lethal. That's got to be better than our other options, though. Maybe that will give us some impact. I, I forgot about Tristana flipping as well. Impact 4. No, it'll be the next one's coming in. No, oh, he's got the zap? <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. Alright, so on his attack, Misfortune's going to flip, but uh, we might get something pretty good here, given that we can nopify the uh, the, the bullet time. And so, or I get, what's it called? Love tap, whatever whatever the, the big Misfortune hit is, uh, we, can, we can counter that. So we might be in an okay space. We're getting fairly low in health. We might just be dead here, but lots of potential goodies coming from this. Okay. Oh, it doesn't. It need to need to hit a skill. Fuck. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna fall to one. Can we switch this to a better way? No. Oh, we're dead like this. Fuck. So this is a good block, right? We want the unit to die to the Grenadier so it doesn't fall in combat. Why are... What happened? Why was this one... Oh, this was 9 onto 8. Okay. We 
we need it to be like this. Yeah, we're just gonna be short. I thought you could nopify a skill. That's that's odd. All right, so maybe we would have been able to pull that one off if we didn't we didn't whoopsies in that middle of that game, but maybe not. Well, I I guess we would have had an opportunity to nopify that that parlay that killed our Teemo. Um, if I had realized that uh, you can't nopify a skill. So maybe some potential. It's still pretty scary when the Pirates deck has two cards in hand and you're at three. You're probably dead. <laughs> but, you know, make, a, make them have it if you can. We would have been able to prevent a few more points of damage there if, uh, if we'd survived out. All right, well, let's see what's happening in here. I, I'm curious if this is a Fairies deck coming out of a Felios Zoe. Uh, and they're just playing Zoe in place of Fizz. Uh, I, I was interested in trying some Ophelios Fizz myself. Uh, haven't uh, got the chance to really come out and run around with it. I'm uh, granted not a uh, not uh, the the biggest fan of Ophelios. <laughs> it's not not the the style of decks I like to play involve having Ophelios in them, and so uh, haven't haven't been jumping out out the gates to give it a try. But I do concede that it's. It's probably got a shot. I, it just feels like a format to where, with so much pirates running around, that um, fairies has a, a lot of good options. And then, uh, uh, with the addition of uh, like darkness being the most popular uh, control deck for whatever reason, uh, feels like it could be a decent space for uh, the Aphelios Fizz deck to come back. All right, no real reason to add Tristana this turn. Uh, we'll just go ahead and get the Gleaming Lantern down. He's not playing PNZ, right? He's not playing a Felios uh, Victor, a Felios Vi, like we're kind of used to seeing. And so our, our Lantern should be safe going into the next turn. Time to pop off. Does this make you want to sing the classic T... No, oh, it's not T-Pain. Oh, man, who is it? It's, uh... Oh, fuck. Oh, it's gonna slip me now. Hang on. T-I. There we go. Big shit poppin'. That's the, that's the song we were trying to find for ourselves. <laughs> Classic tune. All right, I'll focus on the game, I guess. I won't just sing rap songs and things. <laughs> but let's see where this gets us. I'm not super interested in trying to put the Fey Folk on the board and then load up the Fey Folk with the Rainbow Fish. Uh, opponent should be able to just deal with that reasonably enough. I feel like we should have good attacks with both... Uh, the Alcat and Tristana, our health isn't in, like, super danger here. And I don't want to just trade Fey Folk for these dum-dums that he has on board. So. Okay. Rip Tristana, but our good unit gets to hang out. Come on, bud. Got this kitty wanting to hang out as well. Doing a real good job of sticking his claws into me. Let's see how this goes. We're right, we're about to about to start popping off with the Thousand Tailed Saiyans. Uh, draw a bunch of cards, make our units really good. Opponent shouldn't have great answers to what we're doing here. Uh, he's playing this big value game, and I think we're about to start crushing. Oh my god, dude, your butt stinks. Here he is. He's kitty. People like to see the kitty. He says, "What up, internet?" Very happy to see you. <laughs> Very happy to see you, internet people. Alright, we'll take the Nopify route on this one. Uh, save the Twin Disciplines for a little later. We might need to get the damage out of a Twin Disciplines, so feel a little bit safer with it. Let's draw those million cards that we were looking for get into combat. It'd be nice if we had one more mana here so we could pop off one of these two mana spells, but 
Just can't have it all, all the time, I guess. Sure. Okay. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Pale Cascade pop out here and protect a Felios or something, but like we, we have to just spew, right? We have to chunk in as much damage as we can here. Now we're going to try to refill the board as big as we can and then try and close out the game next turn. We, we don't have time to just dirtle around against a guy that's invoked a bunch of times and has a Felios on the board. It's just not going to work. Not going to work as a bud. I'm just kind of eyeballing these two rainbow fish as our, our path to victory on the next turn. There's Pale Cascade. Not surprised to see it. We were peaceful once. Hi, bird. Let's fuck him up next turn. Downside is we can only get one rainbow fish on board, and he's got uh, the, the double stun in hand with the, the Gravitum, and so he should be fairly well aware of uh, who we're going to try and send in with the elusive, unless he spends his mana real weird. What up, Aphelios? I think we're going to have to go into next turn. Not be able to open, but like he, I still think he should struggle with our both of our elusive cards. Gone and nopify this. I don't want to lose our lantern. Fuck off, Moon Boy. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to see that shit. Put it on the small one. I'm curious if this guy plays Group Shot. Uh, that would be a way to take down the uh, Elusive. I don't know. It's kind of tough to imagine that they do, uh, given that he's playing all of these all of these Invoke cards. But I guess he, he technically could have it. So now we're in a spot to where we can produce lethals with like Rainbow Fish into Gleaming Lantern and the like. Uh, and then get extra damage with the, the Twin Disciplines and with the uh, the Pokey Stick. Picked up Crescendo. Alright, let's just start with this and see how it goes. I'm planning on op uh, on attacking if he doesn't, uh, like, directly do something to the board. We still have some options to, like, face Sprout and play Tristana, but I, I think we're pretty close to the lethal we want here. This seems like the kind of dumb deck that might play Star Shaping. So it's like, maybe we should get some additional stuff on the board. But let's wait and see what happens. Grumble Slug's pretty good hit. All right, we didn't hit any uh, elusive givers, so we'll just pick up the quick quill as the attach. Send in the squad. You cannot hold us down. Okay. Probably dead at this point. Uh, we'll we'll see. We we still have a little bit more time, but. Uh, this is going to be a tough spot to recover from. There's the star shaping. Yep. Like we're we're just not playing a uh, a, a big like stat boost like the uh, the winding light. So he's ground this one down pretty well. Still think like this deck's probably garbage, but uh, he'll probably have the victory here, right? The the way I I look at all of these formats, or at least the way we're talking about the format now is. Uh, these control decks should be winning the game on turn 9 or so. And, um, like, the stuff that they're doing is just too slow. They're, this deck is never going to beat the Sun Disk. It's never going to beat uh, Frozen Thralls. It's never going to beat Feel the Rush. And so, 
Uh, it's kind of a an awkward spot for them to be in. Okay, here's the flip kind of cards we need. We can pick up another elusive here in Timo. If he wants to pop off our bird with the Calibrum, then we can move the elusive somewhere else. I think this is okay. Might be able to chunk in enough damage next turn. We could look to protect our Gleaming Lantern. Like, I'm not entirely sure what this guy's up to. Uh, we can look to just swap uh, our attached Quick Quill onto the Gleaming Lantern and then move the, the Rainbow Fish to a Thousand Tailed Saiyan. Thousand Tailed Saiyan. I think that's okay. He's up to something, right? He's not just putting Calibrums onto Gleaming Lantern because it's fun. <laughs> There's a reason he's going for that one. It is odd that he's attacking our elusive units, though. All right, he picked up a double stun there. Decent spot, you know, that he's picked up Gravitum to just put Rainbow Fish on Tristana. Uh, you can't, you can, he can stun her this turn, but then she won't get double stunned into next turn. Probably the way to go about it. And then again, in the same vein as uh, the Quicksands from the other matchups, if he hushes Tristana, she will lose that main attack, right? That plus four attack that she has going for her. But uh, she'll she'll pick up um, a little bit of damage since she still keeps the elusive from the Rainbow Fish. Gonna protect Teemo here. It's just uh, representing more damage that we can deal next turn. Star shaping number two. Love this card. All right, take him to 15, see if we pick up anything interesting. Deny is interesting. It's nice to have uh, in this upcoming combat. Don't need the Fey Folk, though. He's not a, a multi-faction. Not lethal. Alright, let's see what dumb expensive spell he has. This game, again, should be done. Sorry it's taken like an extra 15 minutes. Uh, I don't feel like this is the kind of person that plays chess by themselves on a Friday night, but... <laughs> they're they're, they're going to be close. But, like, uh, again, my, my thought and feeling on uh, these formats and the way that this works is, like, we're on turn 13, turn thir 14, whatever we're at now. Like, if you're playing one of the uh, other control decks of the format, if you're playing a, um, you know, a Feel the Rush deck, you've won the game at this point. If you're playing a uh, Frozen Thralls deck, you've won the game at this point. And what does this Celestials deck do, uh, you know, better than those other ones? Sure, if, like, the game goes to turn 15, uh, these decks have an advantage, but... Like, how often are these games really going to turn 15? It's not very frequently. And so... Okay. Like, good good job. You won the game. But, right, I, I think that, that... I know I don't explain all these concepts super well, but I, I think I'm, like, pretty on point and right as to why that's a bad deck. In that... Um, like, what matchups do you win that you wouldn't win just playing Frozen Thralls? Is kind of the idea... Uh, sure, if you're playing against a lot of uh, 
uh, things like, I don't know, bad karma decks. It's good against the bad decks is where that should be going, right? And that, um, like, the the way that the, the format is going to get ceilinged is if decks like that become popular, if decks like Aphelios, Celestial, whatever thing becomes popular, then the Sun Disk gets good. You're never, 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 never going to outvalue a deck like the Sun Disk. Uh, and the Sun Disk pops off on turn eight or turn nine. And so why are you playing a deck that, that's slow? Like what additional advantages do you get out of doing that? And what does that deck, that, you know, Aphelios deck do that's better than playing the Winding Light? And so, sure, like I, I get that people want to play games for different reasons, right? Uh, uh, having the highest win rate or being at the top of the ladder isn't the reason that everyone plays. But if, if you want to like stop and look at a deck like that and say, why is this deck not good? Uh, I, I think we're pretty on point as to why that will never be competitive. That will never be an actual competitive deck. There will never be a best of three lineup that wants to play that. And then uh, there will be best of three lineups and people that do play that, but it's just never going to be... Uh, it's never going to be good. Alright, on to the next one, though. Up against the Nightfall Bros. Curious, there was some um, hype <laughs> behind the Nightfall decks, if you will, last season. Uh, who, who was it? Sir Tarmund or Monte Cristo was really trying to hype uh, Nightfall as being the big deck for seasonals didn't quite pan out. I felt like that one was just a, a just a little bit too much hype and not enough uh, and not enough meat and it, it seemed to have turned out that way. I don't think anyone made the top cut playing uh, playing Nightfall, but it's a deck to where you know it's close to being good and all the decks around it keep getting nerfed and so it may it may have its place in the sun at some point soon. But here I didn't want to play a card last turn cuz ideally uh, we'll get to play something off of this, uh, off of this gleaming lantern. We'll see. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be rainbow fish popping up, but we would like to see a card uh, that we can play this turn. Here's the grandfather Fay. I don't. F it's like I'm kind of interested in the grandfather Fay, but we also have this papercraft Timo that we can try and pull off, uh, which Nightfall struggles with a little bit. But the Grandfather Fey does give us the bigger units that can block Fearsomes. I think we'll just go for the, the Papercraft here. We don't really have a big value-centric hand on this board. So I'm going to drop the Assistant Librarian, making sure that we use that, uh, use that Gleaming Lantern mana. And then he shouldn't have good blocks onto the Librarian this turn. He could throw the Boisterous Host to pick up the Hallowed. That's fine. But the way I kind of see this going is... Uh, he's going to try and generate a Nightfall to get Diana uh, into Quick Attack Combat. We're going to pop her with the Will of Ionia. That's the only spell we're playing this turn. And then next turn, we would look to play Teemo Papercraft Dragon. Yes. He disagreed. He did, not <laughs> he, he did not have that angle that I was postulating there, but I, I think that was a reasonable assumption of things that could be happening. So now it's a new story. Do we want to try and, like, Papercraft Dragon the Tasty Fey Folk? I don't think we need that much health. I think we're good to still just, like, Papercraft the Teemo. He'll throw the Shadestalker in front of it, but I, I think we're reasonably safe now. Oh my god. <laughs> he's, we, we've put five, path, five puff caps into his deck and he's hit three. It's a little bonkers. interesting pass. I'm not sure what this is. He's just going to vengeance something. Hmm. Alright. Sometimes it's that easy. <laughs> GG. Next battle. Yeah, man, I hope I'm so right about how how this game works and how the metas develop and then the sun disc just becomes a thing again. <laughs> I I haven't got to bitch about watching that movie in fucking ages. You know, you used to have to sit around. I forget. I think it was only like 45 seconds long, but it felt like three minutes every time. And <laughs> having to having to play against the sun disc multiple times was uh, was kind of brutal.
And then the stat that I was always interested in is uh, is how much time a sun disc player spent watching the cinematics. Right, a, a big thing in ladder grinding is just playing as many games as you can as fast as you can. And I, I'm really curious about the space to where, um, you know, you you make the conscious decision to play, uh, to to play a deck like. Uh, uh, whatever that stupid thing is, <laughs> you, you you make the conscious decision to play Sun Disk, and then your your win rate is fine, but your match count's so low because you spend, you know, it, it, let's say that you just hit every single game on the uh, on the Sun Disk, but then after like ten games, that's uh, that's quite a few minutes of lost time <laughs> in terms of uh, getting all that going on. All right, we're going to play this one a little slow. I don't want to be, like, super slow against um, a, a deck like this, uh, against um, uh, Heimerdinger Jace, but I, I don't want to just get annihilated by Vile Feast and have, you know, when we have access to Nopify. And so I think we can, you know, drop Tristana. Ideally, he wouldn't have had a card, but he does, whatever. Uh, and, and now we can at least look to build up our units nicely on this upcoming turn. This would have been a humongous blowout if we had a, um, if we had a deny. We don't, but... Oh my god, he just hit fucking super wide. Welcome to just getting an extra 10 stats. Oh boy. Okay. I think we just have to take a block on these. We'll put Bird down and block something with Tristana. Tristana won't get the kill. But, uh, like, I don't want to trade Grandfather Phase in this space. We have to get some kind of value out of Tristana. Uh, we'll drop the Grandfather Fae. We'll drop the Alcat. We'll drop Teemo. Uh, but that was pretty savage. You know, he, he hits uh, uh, three, five, four ones and a two across his random six. So we have six mana, so we can do Teemo, Fae Folk, Nopify. Uh, the Fae Folk will end up trading here, but we need to kind of get that health buffer. Maybe this will turn around. Whew, that was a tough one. Just activates everything with that sixth cost spell. Not real worried about Teemo. I mean, it's like maybe we should Nopify there because they don't have a ton of targets. But oh, that's a lot better. That's a lot better target. <laughs> get that shit out of here, please. And so, do we get to attack with the Fey Folk though? Probably not this turn. We have uh, a big shutdown on his board next turn, and that these small units can't attack. And then when we drop the Thousand Tailed Saiyan, uh, it messes things up for him a little bit more. We'll just have to see if we can't find a rainbow fish off the face sprout for next turn or something. There's nothing a little ingenuity can't fix. Quick attack and Jace, sure. There's a singular rainbow fish. Wow. So how do we do this? Do we just go say in here? I think we do. I, I was intending on trying to make a rainbow fish play, but uh, we can make all of our units so big. I think this is okay. And then we can look to build into a, a rainbow fish cleanup, right? He has one good block here uh, in, in terms... Oh, God, is this the ruination? No, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, you get, you get a little scared, but it's not what's hitting us. That is pretty good, though. Like, this, our attack is just so bad now. Like, Tristana gets to come in. We do something like this. Man. 
Curious if he'll put his Jace in the line of fire. I don't think he will. Uh, it looks a little suspect when you attack this unit into Jace, and he needs to clear out some board to get more stuff on happening, but takes the, he does take the bait. All right. Probably should have added Bird last turn. He's going to drop the Acceleration Gate. Probably just dead. I mean, we can get a unit on board, but... Ready for acceleration. Let's see how bad it is. Tough hit. One Overwhelm. Lifesteal on Jace. Okay. We've, we've ran into worse. We did hit Fearsome. Can we block all these Fearsomes? GG. That's tough. That's tough. Uh, like, l let's be real. If you hit, if you hit normal on that, uh, that that production surge on turn four, to where uh, you hit like a four and a two, or a three and a three, or even a, like a one, two and a three, uh, fine. But man, hitting hitting five units with the the other tech thing on board is just unrecoverable. All right, what do we got, Fiora Shen? People were people were trying to talk uh, talk up the Fiora Shen at the end of the previous patch. Uh, not sure where we stood on that. I think that was just a. Uh, if you're not watching yourself, you run into people that are just better than others, right? And um, they're able to just climb through masters even or climb through diamond even with bad decks. And I'm pretty sure that's all we just ran into. I don't think this is actually a real deck. Uh, but we are playing the kind of thing that Fiora Shen would be good against if we're loading the board with Grandfather Phase and Tutus and Teemos. Uh, and it's it's certainly a, uh, a a space to where they can get real units down. I'm going to go ahead and just impact. If we trade, I think that's a win for us at the end of the day. And then it's like, I doubt he really wants to, to trade out his kan Kanaku student here. So we're going to take this opportunity to start building up our fairies board. We have the two fi uh, the two rainbow fish in hand, which are a nice opportunity for the future. The scary thing is now that, you know, when he barriers up a Fiora, uh, it, it, how we survive, right? The Fiora hook into Grandfather Fey, not ideal. The Fiora hook into um, these bigger units would let us have a, a shot at surviving. Let's see how these things go. All the rainbow fishes coming to the party. <laughs> sure. Sure, why not? I feel like that's probably an appropriate emote. He's going to do something. It's going to be like a concerted strike if he's not playing units at this point. Uh-huh. So that'll get a Fiora flip. And ideally, we can survive this this next one. She's going to have a good hook into Teemo, but hopefully we can twin disciplines through her uh, fourth one. I guess we do have some opportunities to perhaps, uh, depending on how fast he goes, to just rainbow fish Teemo. Pretty good chance he's just going to open on us, right? That gets him so close to the lethal. I don't think we have a choice. If we if we just play a... Um, uh, if we play the Twin Disciplines for plus attack there, then he's just going to play a barrier. So this is our way to kind of dodge... Uh, that, that style play, and then maybe we can get through another concerted strike with our twin disciplines, right? The unit will die, but Fiora won't get the kill. Alright, fishes, let's fuck them up. 
<laughs> oh God, there's a there's a, the, the line in Forty Year Old Virgin. It's a, I might I might be a virgin, but I'll fuck you up. That's where we're at right now. <laughs> that was a pretty choice draw on the pokey stick as well. If he goes for a, a single combat type play, uh, we we have the the means to try and take Fiora down um, before she can get uh, the the damage in. Goes homecoming. Alright. See if we can do it. I assume this deck probably plays something like Deny, and we're uh, at risk. <laughs> and so, do we want to roll into the next turn? It might be okay to try and draw our own anti Deny. Mm, I mean, we're only playing two copies. All right, boys. You know what the time is. It's time to squeeze them butt cheeks. Get them good. Get them tight. Let's see how it goes. Fuck. <laughs> Should have squeezed them a little tighter, boys. A little tighter. All right, Face Sprout turns up. He still has to actually kill us, right? He has a barrier. Yeah. All right, fine. So interesting. Not a bad set of games. Not a bad set of games. I'm um, still, you know, not entirely certain how I would feel about a deck like this. I, I think the 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 concept and the idea is kind of okay. I think we're you know landing back in a space to where fairies can be good, uh, and is the idea like this uh, the way to chase after it? And after playing some games, right, kind of the space I was in today. It was uh, we played Fizz Riven yesterday with the as a Papercraft Dragon base deck, and I wanted uh, to try out the Fairies version, and I knew the Fairies version of uh, Papercraft Dragon, uh, or I'm sorry, the Fairies version of Fay Riven is something people that do. It's just not something I like, and uh, and so I wanted to still try Fairies, but branch out from that. Uh, and you know, Aphelios Fizz is the kind of ideal landing spot. But this deck, you know, landed in the back of my mind and my memory piece, and I wanted to see how it uh, held up to today. And, and I think a lot of the concepts here are still pretty good, right? You know, maybe Ionia uh, has a little bit more strength than we're, we're wanting to give it credit. Uh, if we're looking to play things like Deny, which are always good, and they're pretty good, uh, especially uh, in a meta full of Feel the Rush type of effects. And then if we want to, say, uh, have Will of Ionia type cards for the likes of Kaisa, no, it's, it's not that bad, right? There's not a, a lot of uh, other ways to achieve these effects in other factions, right? You can play Sharima for the counterspell, but you don't have good removal. Uh, or you can, you know, look towards Shadow Isles for things like Vengeance, but Vengeance is both expensive and it leaves you in a faction that doesn't do aggressive things. And so uh, I think it's kind of an interesting concept here. And I, I'm not sure if we'll carry this on. It does make me also want to remember back to the uh, the Ionia-based Alawi decks, uh, which could be a thing. I, I was uh, kind of at ends with that deck. It, it, it just really, really struggled if you didn't draw Alawi. But when Ionia Alawi was at its peak, it didn't have access to that sixth cost spell that uh, uh, does the damage and makes the, uh, makes the tentacle. And so maybe that's a, an idea to kind of take in as well. Uh, but I, I think as we move into to best of three land tomorrow, as our gauntlet comes up, uh, we'll probably be looking to play Kaisa, looking to play... Uh, I, I think I want to take out Aphelios Fizz, but play with Rainbow Fish instead of Papercraft Dragon, and then still have the three copies of the Winding Light, is where I'm kind of leaning in my brain piece to take that deck, and then we'll probably play uh, Draven Scion Vi. But... Yeah, this deck, you know, if you're looking to double up on fairies, it's an interesting thing. If you're looking to have access to Ionia, it's an interesting thing. Uh, it just feels like it's missing a little bit of something. And so uh, I don't think it will be a great ladder grinder, but it, it does have things going for it now as, you know, Mystic Shot's fallen out of favor. Uh, there's not a lot of great answers to a go-wide uh, style of attack. And... Uh, 
the, the rainbow fish is still uh, quite a powerful threat. So I think it was worthwhile to, to test out and try and, you know, put the tip in and see what it feels like. But that is going to do it for us today. And so I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I hope you learned how to go fishing just a little bit better. Maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. Uh, this is Bust, and we thank you for being here.